coming out. Looks like a scarecrow with a scarf. Nice, Billy. He's not got a thing to eat. You just want to play, right? Oh. <laughs> Come on. Oh, oh what the? <laughs> Hello? Who the blazes may you be, stranger? My name's Crane, gentlemen. Ichabod Crane. Could you assist me in some way here? What's a Ichabod Crane? Well, a crane is a bird with skinny legs and a long beak. <laughs> well, what we got here is a scared crane. Not a scared crow like we first thought. <laughs> That's a good one, Brahms! Scared crane, scared crow. That's a good one. <laughs> I'm the new schoolmaster. Uh, would you be so kind as to... That's so? Well, I'm Brom Bones. Half horse, half bear, and two-thirds wildcat. I'm tougher than old moose meat and meaner than turpentine tonic. Ain't I, Fred? You're right. And them's his good points. Why, well, I'm the orneriest cuss this side of the Hudson River. I'm the gouginess, bone cracking, rassle fire in the whole county. Ain't I, Fred? You're right. And that's his good natured side. And I'll tell you what, stranger, there's only two kinds of folks that just naturally makes me want to pinch their heads off Connecticut Yankees and. Skinny, pinch-faced schoolmasters. Ain't that right, Fred? Right. And them's his kind regards. As a matter of fact, stranger, school teachers don't last long around here. They just have a way of disappearing. They just vanish in the night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to meet you, gentlemen. Do you think I might prevail upon you to help me out of this ridiculous and embarrassing situation. Help? Why, sure. Me and Fred Dutcher is always happy to help a stranger that's in a fix. Is that the new schoolmaster? So he says. <laughs> Imagine, all he wanted to do was lick me. <laughs> okay. You must be Mr. Vanderhoof? If you're not a married man, get in. Thank you, Mr. Bones. Mr. Dutcher. Good day. It was nice meeting you. Widows make the best wives. That's a good thing for a bachelor to keep in mind. Go! I've never been in this part of New York. I'm from Connecticut, you know. Well, why'd you leave? Adventure, sir. New people, new experiences. Discovered wonders provide spice in a man's life. Now you come to the wrong place. Sleepy Hollow is about as exciting as fried mush. If it wasn't for the ghost, wouldn't be nothing to say between hello and goodbye. I'm sure I'll like it. Ain't but a handful of children to teach. Don't pay much. Got to sleep at the school. Take your meals with a different family every week. Well, Vegas can't be choosers, Mr. Vanderhoof. You ain't never been married? No way, shape, or form? No, sir. Uh, I've never found just the right circumstances. You wouldn't be so skinny if you was married and fed up proper. I'm sure that's true. You're darn right. And don't know what fed up means. Kelly's been proper married. I'll get it for him. I'll get it. Might not be safe. What with the ice under that snow? Sir, we Connecticut Yankees are born to ice and snow. Hello, girls. Hello. It's Miss Katrina. Watch yourself now. Don't want you getting hurt your first day. Especially with nobody to take care of you. Don't worry, I'll be down in a second. It's just a matter of getting to the right spot here. Whoa. Hello, Miss Katrina. 
Katrina. Good morning. Is that him? Hmm. Just put the things on his bed, Miss Katrina. Yes, Mr. Vanderhoof. Sorry, mademoiselle. I was only trying... Indeed you were, sir. Please forgive me, Miss... Um... Van Tassel. Oh, then you must be the wife of Squire Van Tassel who hired me. He is my father. And can fire you, sir. So your first assignment will be to read pages 1 through 20. Now my job is to help with your education, but you have to help too by doing your homework. And if you don't do that, if you don't do that, the only one that gets penalized is you. Who said that? It's our owl, sir. Chief Running Buffalo. What's his name? The ghost of Chief Running Buffalo, sir. The, the ghost? You don't believe in that kind of stuff, do you? Well, the schoolhouse is built on an old Indian cemetery. Grandpa says it's been haunted for years by spirits from the past. Grandpa says... Has anyone in here actually ever seen a ghost? Put up your hands. Ted. I've seen the Headless Horseman. You're lying, Ted Dumkey. Well, I almost see him. I almost saw him, fellas, fellas, please. Oh, I almost saw him, saw him fellows, Ted fellows. Dumpy. Hey, 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 hey. I almost seen him. <laughs> School's dismissed. Don't forget your homework, please, please. Some work you need in here? Mr. Vanderhoof, I'm going to have to insist that you tell the children that your stories are nothing but fairy tales. Hold on, Mr. Smart, unmarried schoolmaster. That was the truth they told you about them Indian spirits. Mr. Vanderhoof, Indian ghosts, headless horsemen? Bite down your tongue! Don't you ever go laughing at the Headless Horseman. Do you expect me to believe that that owl is the spirit of a dead Indian? Chief Running Buffalo. All right, all right, all right, all right. Um, in a more practical matter, Mr. Vanderhoof, is there anything you can do about this awful smell of garlic here? It's from the Devil's Bay. Oh. Over the door there. Wards off evil spirits. More in there than garlic. Our Gonquin medicine man gave me the recipe. I abhor superstition, sir. What are you going to do? I'm going to rid my living quarters of this vile stench. No, no, you can't do that. <laughs> That was a fool thing to do. Now you ain't got no protection against them at all. Mr. Vanderhoof, I wish to share your friendship without your eccentricity. I'll be coming to uh, 
Take your supper in a couple hours. Great. And wait till you taste Thelma's sausage pie. <laughs> Who's Thelma? My daughter. Widow woman these past five years. Sherry woman. Just hankering to do for some lucky fella. Bring your washing. No, no, no. I couldn't trouble her with my wash. I, I don't want to do that. Of course you could. Woman takes to a man's kind of troubles much easier than loneliness. Oh, I don't know that that's true for all women. Um, Katrina Van Tassel, for instance, doesn't seem to be particularly lonely. What's so funny? Remember that big fella you met this morning? Brom Bones. He figures Katrina's his girl. If he catches you looking sideways at her, he's just naturally gonna tie knots in all your arms and legs. Or worse. R.I.P.? Brom Bones killed the previous schoolmaster? I just as well have. Palmer was never the same after Brom Bones thundered the poor fellow halfway across the country. Brom Bones assaulted the schoolmaster just for looking at Miss Van Tassel? Assaulted, a peppered, and a roasted him too. Just for reading poetry to Katrina. Of course, I think by that time Palmer was already a little funny in the head like uh, the other schoolmasters. Uh, what do you mean? Three before Palmer. All turned strange before they took off out of here. Because I figured it was the ghosts and spirits that did it to them. Come away with those ridiculous, ridiculous scare stories of yours. Yeah, just like them others. Seems a shame. You fellas, with all your book learning, always come up short on common horse Oh, sir. bother all that, Mr. Fritz Vanderhoof. What happened to my predecessor, Winthrop Palmer? I told you! Didn't have the grit of a short chicken after Brom Bones stumping. Looked over his shoulder one dark night. Saw the headless horseman coming after him. Galloped his horse straight away over the Palisades and right down into the Hudson River. Fred Dutcher saw it firsthand. Bad currents in the Hudson hereabouts. Old Palmer never had a chance. If the jump didn't do it, the river did. Well, real shame. Nice man. Too bad. Real oh, shame. Watch yourself. Watch your step. Sad story. Hope nothing like that ever happens to you. By the way, we eat supper 5.30 sharp. Fitz go, Minerva. Get up! See it? See what? You didn't see it? It was over there. There was a shadow just on that wall. What shadow? Well, nothing. Maybe it was just my imagination. Sure. Empty stomach can spin a man's head. Thelma's made a fine stuffed goose in your honor. Let's go. Oh, 
Merv Dunkley. May I say that the cuisine is a splendid canvas of the culinary arts. Yeah, 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 yeah. And she cooks pretty good, too. I thought that young Ted was going to be here. He's over at Jan Van Tassel's. He practically lives there. Have another piece of pie. Oh, oh, it's so big. Thank you. And you can call me Thelma. Okay. There, you see, I, I said she'd like you. You're a lucky fellow. My Thelma's a fine figure of a woman. Turn around once or twice so he can see you ain't got no sharp corners. Oh, Papa, you're terrible. Oh! oh. oh. You all right, sir? <laughs> and she's strong, too, huh? She's strong. Not like these weak, twittery little ones you see all around these days, huh? <laughs> oh, dear lady, let me help you. Take your clothes off this minute. I beg your pardon? For sewing. You wouldn't be coming apart at the seams if you was a married man. Wait. I'll give you Dumkey's coat. You leave that old rag with me, and I'll mend it as good as new. The late Mr. Dumkey's coat? I don't know that I can accept her departed husband's clothing. Take it, take it. Dumkey don't need it. Besides, it's a good sign. Like she's already thinking of you in Dumkey's place, eh? Well, this is really very kind. I want you to try this one on. All right. Okay. You're very kind. Oh. Oh. A tuck here and a tuck there, and it'll fit you better than it did Dumpkey. I just saw a face in the window. I don't see anything. There's nobody out there. What kind of a face did you see? A man's face. It was big, heavy, uh, it had a big, white, bushy beard. White beard? Yes, wild-eyed look. Mole on the cheek. Palmer! <gasps> Winthrop Palmer? I thought you said he was dead. He is! I knew something like this would happen if you burned that devil bag. All that stuff and nonsense about bags and spells and ghosts are nothing but medieval superstition. I told this fellow that Sleepy Hollow was full of ghosts, but he wouldn't listen. He was just like all the others. And now the schoolmaster Palmer has come back. Like we haven't got enough ghosts already. Truthfully, madam, I've heard little else since my arrival, but there's not a whiff of scientific proof for the existence of spirits. Scientific? Wait. Just wait. This is only good for ordinary ghosts. It's not nearly as strong as a devil bag. But I'd feel a lot better if you were carrying it with you tonight. I want to thank you both for your Cordiality and hospitality. Good night, dear lady. Parting is such sweet sorrow. Oh, nice. Very nice. You should write that down. Yeah, you bet. Parting is such sweet sorrow. And if the spooks don't get you, I'll see you tomorrow.
my mother told me to bring you this great coat to go with your other. Why, you no good little... <laughs> I'll get you. Wait till I get my hands on you. Fred, you're supposed to pull when I push and push when I pull. I know, but the trouble is that you push twice as far as I pull, so that means I gotta do twice as much as you just to keep even with you. Here, drink some tea, Fred, while I spell you. I'm gonna drink some tea while she spells me. By golly, missus. You him here in of a misery whip better than most men folks I know. All a matter of harmony and rhythm. You and me just naturally seem cut out for a double harness, brown bones. Now, Thelma, you gotta stop talking like that. You know I'm fixing to get hitched up with Katrina one of these days. You've been saying that for years, and there ain't none of us getting any younger. Besides, Katrina Van Tassel wouldn't know how to handle a big old bear of a man like you. Ooh, it's that bad place in my back where I get a hitch every once in a while. Oh, you poor thing. Ow. Why don't you come on inside and I'll give you a good rub with the horse liniment. No, no thank you, Thelma. I'll be fine. Just gotta move around and ease it out. Wait a minute. I know how to fix this. It, it'll yeah, be what you right. gotta do is you have to relax your muscles. Remember that? You have to, here, do that one. That always works. Come on. Like that? Well. Oh. That's right. Relax the muscles back here. Ah. Okay. You gotta be the biggest, dumbest moose in the whole county. Oh, no. That's not so. No. I've seen a lot of big mooses that aren't near as smart as Brom. Oh. Uh, um. What are you doing with Dumkey's clothes? That's none of your business. I'm fixing him up for the new schoolmaster. Poor fella ain't hardly got a handful of threads between him and all outdoors. And besides... Our Thelma's caught his eye. He's sweet on you. Oh, Papa, that ain't true at all. Fact is, I think he's already taken a fancy to Katrina Van Tassel. What? Is that... that... Scarecrane. Has that Scarecrane been up to anything with my Katrina? If I see that skinny Yankee anywhere near my girl, I'll... I'll scrunch him up and eat him for breakfast. <laughs> then you'll have more brains in your belly than you ever had in your head. <laughs> oh. Uh. I'll get the liniment. I think we better pay that schoolmaster a little visit. Sir Isaac Newton called it gravity. And it is literally the force that keeps us from falling off the face of the earth. Jan? Does it work on ghosts? Yeah, if they're ghosts, uh, they're subject to the force of gravity like everything else. Now, now watch this. Watch how our position changes as the Earth turns. See, we're walking upside down sometimes. We don't even know it. Why don't we feel anything? Because the Earth revolves so slowly. But, you know, if something were to change and uh, the Earth started to spin faster, there would be less gravitational pull, and we would fall off the face of the Earth. Oh, no. Let's get out of here. We could all burn up. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Everybody outside, very calmly. You didn't believe it was a ghost. You burnt the devil bag. This was an accident. It had nothing to do no, with... No, sir, the evil spirits are after you. Thank you, Mr. Bones. Uh, it got out of hand really kind of fast for me. Oh. You stay away from my girl, or it's going to get a lot hotter around here for you than that stove. Start believing. You better get yourself another devil back. I guess the ways in which this town has inspired me, I feel I can make a real contribution here.
here. Uh, the most peculiar feelings. <laughs> Squire, I don't take it lightly seeing the schoolmaster hanging around Katrina. I thought you and me had an agreement. I agreed that you could court my Katrina with matrimonial intentions. But that was three years ago, Brown Bones. Well, now, Squire, marriage ain't nothing for a man to hurry into. And for three years, I'm still not a grandfather. to see you tonight at choir practice. See, I think that so much can be expressed through the voice. Ah. I'll be there. And let it out. That's right. Don't hold it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let it out. Let it. And now breathe in and take a big breath through your nose. Through your nose. Up their lips and making faces at each other. All of them? Right out in a bare open church? Yeah. Just bold as brass. I mean, no shame at all. I knew that fellow was an odd duck from the first. I should have pounded his head down to his boot tops right off. <laughs> Bay. Hey. B. B. Bot. Bo. Bo. Boo. Marvelous. Good. Let's not do that. Let's not do it anymore. We'll come back to that. Do this. Come on, Fred. What are they up to now? I can't quite tell. And now breathe in. Through your nose, through your nose. And now put your lips very forward. That's right. Now breathe in again. Mm -hmm. Not ooh, mm -hmm. it's still a mm -hmm. That's right. Uh-oh. They're making kind of... Breathe in deeply, deeply. Kind of kissy faces at the schoolmaster. Ah, uh, Katrina, too. Yeah. And more forward and more forward. Fred, what's going on now? Oh, it's, uh... It's better you don't know, Brom. Ah, uh, come on, Fred. We gotta think of something. We gotta put an end to this, Fred. There's a lot going on in there that's not right for a choir practice. Hey, Bro, wait a minute. I got me an idea. All right, now suppose I go in there and I start pulling that bell rope. Right now, right now. Oh. I like that, Fred. Smart. That old bell will make so much noise, it'll bring half a sleepy off oh, on the run. The no one will suspect it was you and me. What did it? Come on. Sign, then pull her three or four good smart hallways. I think we've all worked hard enough for our first session. But before we leave, I understand that you've all been looking forward to, perhaps as keenly as I have, 
um, Miss Van Tassel favoring us with a solo. I can explain. And so I am sure can that other dolt. Carl, take me home. I'll get you for this school teacher. You just wait. believe in ghosts, so stop it right now. Fritz, aren't you a little old to be running around graveyards dressed like an Indian? Pretty smart, ain't you? First the headless horseman, now this. Well, maybe I can't get you to believe in ghosts, but you've got to stop telling the children there ain't none. My duty is to teach the truth. How can you when you don't know what the truth is? For it's truth like beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Well, you're going to be a black-eyed beauty if you don't open up yours to what's around you. Hi, Chief. Oh, I've got something for you. Want some bread? Mm. Well, leave it here for you. Hmm. My father could see me now. He was a big one for jokes, and I'll name Chief Running Buffalo would have tickled him about as much as naming me Ichabod. Mm -hmm. This fellow just won't quit. Ah, the 
Handle the session. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Fritz, you crazy old man, you nearly killed me. Suppose tricks of yours are going to be the death of me. I have an appointment in Terrortown, Katrina. Father? Mm-hmm. Why did you board the school teacher with everyone else before us? To give me time to find out if he was peculiar, like Palmer and the others. Mm. Do you think he's peculiar? You want to know if I like him? Yes. Hmm. Well, I have to know him better. What about Brom? Can't a girl have two suitors? If you go outside, Brom would be happy to answer that question for you. Morning, Squire. Oh, Fred. Can I ask you something? Yes, sir. Well, you must promise not to tell Brom. Being his best friend, you might be tempted. Oh, no, ma'am, no. No, I, I wouldn't. It'll, it'll be our secret, ma'am. Good. Is he courting anyone else besides me? Oh, no. No, ma'am, no. Though he... He wouldn't do a thing like that, ma'am. Thank you, Fred. You're, you're welcome. I can't figure out why she asked you that. Well, maybe she heard that Thelma is stuck on you, and she thinks that you're courting her, too. Yeah? Maybe I can make Katrina jealous of me. But I'm still gonna put that old scarecrow in this place one of these days. Yeah, the cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> Fritz, the dangerous thing you did last night, you nearly ran that horse over me. Horse? Thelma had the mare for choir practice, don't you remember? Cape was quite effective and that black horse was a beauty. Have you gone loony? I ain't got no black horse. When did this happen? After we left here, maybe half an hour. Took me that long to walk home and wash off the Indian paint. By golly! You did see it! I saw something. You saw it! Admit it! Ichabod Crane, you saw a ghost! A real ghost! That's right, Squire Baltus. Crane said he saw this ghost on a horse and that it was after him. Hmm. Are you sure about that? I don't think he's gone all the way. Not like Palmer. Maybe a little like the others. Hmm. Sounds like it. Ah, uh, that's too bad. You know, I like this one. I even had thoughts about him as a husband for Katrina. Oh, well, that's too bad. Too bad. Yep. Too bad. Yeah. Nice fellow, too. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, Squire, maybe this one we don't have to lose. Maybe this one we can save. What are you trying to say, Fritz Vanderhoof? Looney is loony. I got an idea. A full-figured... Number one guess about this schoolmaster business. Now, in the first place, they all lived in that old schoolhouse over the Indian graveyard, eh? Well, I don't see what that has to do... Now, wait, I'll tell you. In the second place, none of them was married. They was all bachelors, like Palmer and Ichabod Crane. Now, you see, bachelors ain't got no tolerance built up like married men has. Are you trying to say you think that getting Ichabod married will cure the... Funny business? Well, why not? 
How many times have you heard someone say he's crazy from being married? So why not? If he starts that way, maybe a wife could drive him back the other way. Hmm. Maybe that's not such a foolish notion. Uh, finding schoolmasters is not easy, you know. Yep. I figure we should get Mr. Ichabod Crane married. Yeah. yeah. Only one problem I see. Now, the only ladies handy for marriage are my Thelma and your Katrina. Now, hold on here, Fritz Vanderhoof. Not my Katrina. No, sir. Now, Brown Bones is no prize package, but he's no loony either. Exactly. Now, what Ichabod needs is a woman with experience. Now, a widow like my Thelma would be perfect. But Ichabod, he's got Google eyes for your Katrina. Oh, well, I'll soon fix that. I'll forbid Katrina to see the fellow, to talk to him. I'll, I'll even uh, marry her off to Brown Bones immediately. By golly, Squire, you figured that marvelous good. I always said you got a problem, you take it to the Squire. I mean, who's got a bigger head, eh? <laughs> <laughs> hmm? Whoa! Whoa! But tell me, Fritz, how do you know your Thelma would marry Ichabod? I have it on very good authority that she would dearly love to wed Brom Bones. Ah. Well, if he was already married to your Katrina, Nickabod was the only one left. My Thelma's a smart girl. And she'll figure it out. I mean, half a loaf is better than, than no, no soup at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see to it, believe me. <laughs> all right, Carl. Squire. Be seeing you, Squire Balthus. Hi, Squire. I think old Fritz is up to something. You, you know, he's pretty cagey. Well, maybe. But it uh, sounded to me, you know, like uh, old Scarecrane really thought he saw the headless horseman. <laughs> Almost scared him to death. Maybe it will the next time, eh? purpose. If a person suddenly sticks her bustle where I'm holding a pin, it's her fault if she gets stuck. You're just jealous. Yes, you are, Thelma Dumkey. You're so jealous of me, you could bust. <sighs> What's to be jealous of? If I feel anything, I feel pity. Pity? You pity me in heaven's name. <laughs> Why would you pity me? Because a person that's selfish and greedy should be pitied. Thelma. Vanderhoof Dumkey. Because a person that already has the best man in the county wrapped around her little finger like a wedding ring shouldn't be making Google eyes at other men. Well, I don't think that Brombones is the best man in the county. As a matter of fact, he's the best man in the county that I would choose to marry. You don't want to marry a big, strong, handsome, lovable man like Brom Bones? I think he's a big oaf. He's uncouth and he's uncultured and unkempt, and uninteresting and underfoot. My feet every time I turn around. Bite your tongue! You don't deserve a man the likes of Brom Bones. Why, Thelma Dumkey. You're in love with Brom Bones. <clears throat> yeah, I have been ever since I first saw him. Only married Dumpkey to make him jealous. <gasps> now he only has eyes for you. Oh, poor Thelma.
I want a gentle man. An educated man. A quiet man. One to walk with in the sunset. Who whisper the sweet words of the old poets. You're falling in love with Ichabod Crane? Silly, isn't it? A penniless school teacher. Awkward. Clumsy as a new calf. And such a dear. Oh. Katrina Van Tessel, we have to do something about this fine kettle of fish. Well, what can we do? I mean, our father will not even permit me to speak to Ichabod and... Brom Bones chases away any man who even gets close to me. Thelma, I think the fates are against us as well as the men of Sleepy Hollow. I don't know about the fates. But men, I do, believe me. Against two women with one idea, they don't stand a chance. the late and apparently unlamented Winthrop Palmer. Winthrop Palmer? You're not dead? And not alive. I am both. And neither! <laughs> Tremble! Quake, you blissful idiot! Look at me and you look at yourself. They call me lunatic. And they shall call you the same! <laughs> I have returned to avenge myself upon Brom Bones for his treatment of me. And then I shall exorcise the headless horseman, casting both into the eternal pit of perdition. Vengeance! I will have vengeance! <gasps> I recognize that you are a fellow pedagogue, a tired and ill-treated disseminator of learning amongst the barbarous and the ignorant. Why have you come to this place? Uh, I don't know. It seemed like the right thing to do at the time. They are all bewitched, these denizens of Sleepy Hollow. Sprites, elves, parries, and pukas, all of them. No, I'll admit that uh, I've found uh, most of the people around here a, a little bit odd at times, but... Odd? Don't you know they're all believers in ghosts, specters, spooks, and the crawling, clawing hideosities that fly about at night? Yeah, pretty silly, isn't it? It's plain that you don't believe in such things. As plain as the nose on your face. We, sir, are both men of learning. Of course, we could never believe in all that ghost rubbish. No, of course. I never believed in them. Even after I saw them. And talked to them, you know. You saw them? Ghosts? Oh, many times. They became intolerable nuisances, you know. All that howling about and shrieking. The best thing to do is ignore them. You were able to ignore them? Uh, yes. Except for him. Him? Um... The Hessian fellow that lost his head in the Battle of Yonkers. Yes, the accursed headless horseman. But I will have my revenge on him. And upon that lout, 
that lump of clay, that bellowing, bragging, bumptious bumpkin, brown bones! They ruined my career, you know. How did they do that? They killed me, you fool! <laughs> but I shall have mine back. And you shall help me, yes? Yes? Well? Tell no one you saw me. No one. This will be our little secret. Our little secret. I shall let you know when I need your help. Let me know anything, yes, as long as it's not illegal, immoral, or contrary to the grade school teacher's code. That's the whole story, Fritz. That's everything that happened. I had to tell somebody, somebody I trusted. But for heaven's sakes, don't mention a word of this to anybody that might think I was... Looney. Yeah. Don't want nobody thinking you're losing your buttons like Palmer and them others. Actually, the more I think about it, I think I just had a nightmare, that's all. Ah. No, I didn't have any nightmare. You had a, a real first-class visitation. Nothing serious, though. Just noisy ghosts. Poltergeists, we call them. I haven't told you the worst part of it. What? This, I don't think you're going to believe at all. I'm not sure I do. Before everything else happened, I had a visit from the late Mr. Winthrop Palmer. In the spirit and flesh. I don't know. I'm not sure which. You don't say. And uh, he uh, looked in the window at you like he did the other night? No, no, no. This time he was lying in the bed behind those curtains uh, when I came home last night. It scared me half to death. Well, it could have been a lot of other fellas, Ichabod. Natural ones at that. You know, you might be seeing ghosts that ain't even there now. I don't think so. I don't think so. He told me he's come back to take revenge on Brom Bones and the Headless Horseman. Brom Bones? Ah. Yeah, well, that... That could be. Brom Bones was always making poor Palmer miserable. Yeah, but wait a minute. Didn't, didn't you say that Palmer was always a little odd, even before Brombone started to badger him? Oh, sure, but uh, all the schoolmasters these past five years turned, uh, you know, funny in the head after a while. Palmer, he, uh, he lost more of his buttons than the others did. Yeah, and that's exactly why I don't think there's a new ghost here in Sleepy Hollow. What, you think a loony, maybe? Ah, that couldn't be. He horse jumped into the river. He swooshed. No, he didn't swoosh. He didn't swoosh. And I'll tell you something else. I think that Mr. Winthrop Palmer is your famous headless horseman. Right down to the cape and the saber. First things we do first, Stickerbud. Thelma is making you some new uh, devil bags to hang up. All the windows and the doors you hang with them. 
and the spooks won't bother you so much. And uh, I'll think about the other. Fritz, Fritz, this Palmer, whatever he is, may be dangerous. Maybe you and I should try to find a way to tell the others. Oh, no, that would be terrible. You don't want people to think that you're getting funny like the others, do you? No, 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 but, uh, but still, still I... Still, 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 still. You leave it to me. The Headless Horseman, Palmer couldn't be. Why not? The ghost was the one who chased old Palmer over the cliff and into the river. Eh? <laughs> uh, I don't think I'm uh, going a little funny in the loft. I saw what I saw. You saw it too, didn't you? Oh, Palmer, that's who. Uh, never mind. Ichabod? Yeah. Get these put up as soon as you can. Door, all the windows, chimney too. All right. Dear lady, thank you for another wonderful filling meal. Study your homework. <laughs> okay? Goodbye, Ted. Goodbye, Mr. Crane. <sighs> Get up, Good night, Ichabod. Goodbye, thank you. Good night. Chief? Chief? You there, Chief? For you. Squire Van Tassel told me to bring it to you. The book? Oh, Squire Van Tassel. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good night. Good night, sir. Thank you.
wake up. You're safe at home now. It was a headless horseman. Did you see him? Yes, I saw somebody. Somebody? What kind of somebody? Who? Squire, if I told you who I thought I saw, you might think I'd seen a ghost. Tell me what you saw, and I'll tell you what I think. It was a headless horseman. He tried to cut my head off with his big saber. I think what Carl saw, what I saw, was Winthrop Palmer. Oh. I talked with Palmer last night, Squire, as close as I am to you. Palmer is dead. You know, jumped in the river. Goodbye, God. Well, fine, all right, that may be true or it may not be true, but something or somebody's torn the school apart. We have a man here in shock. There's a warning for me in the blackboard. Chief Running Buffalo's been turned to wood. Who? The owl. Oh. Carl saw the mess at the school. He could tell you what it looks like. The headless horseman tried to do me in. He did. There he is. He's come back for me. It's only the moon. Oh, poor fellow. The night's been too much for him. I'll take him to his quarters and his wife can put him to bed. But you stay. Go warm yourself by the fire. Come, Carl. Relax. Well, the first part of the scheme's working good. We'd better get out of here before the squire sees us. Yeah. I'll go back and straighten up the school. You go get the owl. The owl. Don't talk. Don't say anything. We only have a moment before my father comes back. I just wanted to tell you that I haven't been avoiding you on purpose. Papa has forbidden me to talk to you or to be any place where you are. Why? He thinks you're peculiar like the others. So that's it. Someone's been filling his head with stories about you. Katrina, I'm in love with you. And I'm not going to be kept away from you. And very soon, everyone around here is going to know that I love you. Sander C. What is happening here? What's going on? Papa, please, you don't understand. Oh, I understand. Who do I see downstairs in her night clothes talking to somebody she's not supposed to? Squire, sir, I don't know what you've heard about me, but whatever it is, I can assure you I'm not getting strange. I've seen what I saw. Listen to Ichabod, Papa. Oh, I'll listen. But first, you get upstairs to bed. Go. And now, Mr. Schoolmaster Crane, let's go to the school, and we'll see who's seen what or not. Himself, he could have got lost. Let's go. Abram, what kind of owl is it anyway? Just
just an old barn owl. Why? Sure is a lot stronger than he looks. That's funny. I thought I left only one lamp lit. Well, come on in and you'll see the kind of thing that's been happening to me. It's a real mess, isn't it, sir? Do you see a mess here? And is that the owl that turned into wood? I don't understand. This place was a shambles. Well, a bachelor's life is lonely, and maybe sometimes you see things that aren't there. I beg your pardon, sir? Well, a married man doesn't have so much uh, imagination, you see. Get married. This is quite a coincidence, sir. I was going to ask your permission tonight. Not needed. You have no objections? Objections? <laughs> I insist. I'll even help. I'll make the arrangements, and you can announce your engagement at the Winter Ball tomorrow night. <laughs> Don't worry. It'll clear up. You'll see. do with the dress form. We'll make us a headless horseman. Your pa will kill you. I'll tell him you did it. My mom will kill me. You tell her I did it. <laughs> nice dance, ain't it? Mm -hmm. I was just saying to Fred that it was a nice dance. It was. He was. He just, uh, he just said that about, about a minute ago. Small talk, Brom Bones. Always small talk. Why don't you just come right out and ask me to marry you? Now, Thelma, why do you want to go talking like that? Just about everybody in Sleepy Hollow knows that Brom is going to marry Katrina one of these days. Go stick your head in a punch bowl, Fred Dutcher. Up to the collar. Now, Thelma, I am going to marry Katrina Van Tassel for true. Fact is, the squire's going to announce it tonight. Don't believe everything you hear. Fact is, you're going to marry me. That's what you really want. Thelma, if you get what you want, and you want what you get, is the getting as good as the wanting, or is the wanting as bad as the getting? Make it look spooky. Okay, let's go. Take care of this. You boys have your choice of washing dishes in the kitchen or taking a trip to the woodshed. The kitchen. <laughs> 
your grandkids getting my kid into trouble again. <clears throat> Let me get you some punch. Would you like some punch? Thank you. I'm absolutely thrilled to be here. The whole idea of this party is just terrific. I'm so glad you're enjoying yourself. It was all my mother's doing. She started the Winter Bowl years ago. This is the 15th one that we've had so far. And I do think the best of all. May I dare to hope that my presence has something to do with your feelings? You may dare to hope what you wish, sir. I hope to make you my bride. Would it please you to know that my father said that you are a passably good school teacher and may recommend you as permanent schoolmaster? I'll do anything. No more ghosts, no more clumsy accidents. Your father will never think me out again. I believe this is my dance, Miss Katrina. Excuse us. before Baltus comes back out. Yes, go on. Go. But whatever am I going to do with you? You're as clumsy as a pig in a parlor. Well, I've never thought about myself in quite that way, but um, when I'm around you, it just seems I've become overly enthusiastic. I so hoped that everything would be ever so different tonight. You look so polished and gallant in your new suit. I promised myself to be on my best behavior, to be especially careful of everything I did, every move I made, and I was until I saw his face in the window. No, Ichabod. Not that again, no. Hasn't everybody told you? Poor Mr. Palmer 
died this past year. Yeah, but why do I keep seeing him? You know, I wish I knew that. I should go back inside before Papa misses me. It'll be the worst for the both of us if he should catch us here together. I'll leave. With you. I've got some words for you, Brombo. Go jump in the river. <laughs> away, away into the reaches of the Velvet Knight noble steed. Carry me to my poor bower where dreams of fair Katrina will form me castles and kingdoms make. Mr. Ichabod Crane tonight, once and for all. Ichabod Crane's about to meet the Headless Horseman for the last time. Are you going to scare him off the cliff and push him in the river like you did old Palmer? I'm going to run that long neck, skinny Yankee teacher critter so far out of this county, he won't never come back. Come on. <laughs> Every time I see in this thing, what if what if you run into the real one? There ain't no headless horse, my friend. There ain't no ghost. <sighs> well, you should look scary to me. <laughs> Cut that out. Somebody's following us. <laughs> well, don't worry about Ted. The children are already upstairs asleep. And I'm sorry about everything turning out so crazy. Ah, oh, don't be squire. I think it was the best winter ball of them all. Papa Wood, let's go. Oh. Good night, Squire. Good night. Days and nights, what are you doing here? Oh, nothing much, really, Squire. Just hanging about. Eh? <laughs>
Giddy up. Giddy up, boy. Come on, Gunpowder. Come on. Come on. Come on, boy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We've got them headed in the right direction. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Come on.
Michael, what are we going to do? Don't notice him. Maybe he'll go away. Hey, Bra! 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 Are you all right? What's going on here? Evening, folks. Look, Papa, now we know who the Headless Horseman is. Brom Bones. So you're the one has been scaring Sleepy Hollow all these years. Wait till the squire hears about this. Oh, I sure hope he doesn't find out about this. I surely do wish it. Well, he's gone, huh? So is everybody else in Sleepy Hollow. You won't be able to show your big, ugly face around here, believe me. Now, Papa, let's not be too hasty. Maybe there's a way that nobody has to know about the trick that Brahms been playing. I'll do anything, anything. You wouldn't want to be spreading rumors around about a new son-in-law, would you? Well, if he's part of the family, it would make a difference. Well, let's go. you didn't drown after all. But we'll all be happier if you never come back this way again. My dear squire, one return visit is quite enough for me, too. <laughs> I may be crazy, but I am not stupid. Lay on, driver! Enough is enough! <laughs> Please, please. Stop, Mr. Palmer! Squire Van Tassel, I don't care what you think about me, Palmer's no ghost. He's a genuine, dyed-in-the-wool certified lunatic, and he's galloping around here free as a bird. I know, my boy, I know. I don't care, Squire, this is important. He could be dangerous, don't you understand? Yes, yes, my boy, I understand. And I'm sorry that I didn't believe you before. Even if you never permit me to see Katrina again, if you send her away or if you force her to marry somebody else, I must insist that you listen to me. Palmer's not a ghost, he's a... What did you say, Squire? I said I know. I found Palmer hanging by his heels, upside down in the barn. They just took him away. Papa doesn't think you're strange anymore, Ichabod. Do you, Papa? I'm sorry. I was wrong. No, Palmer was real all the time. Papa says you can court me, and we can become engaged. Isn't that wonderful, Ichabod? Really? Yes, that's wonderful, sir. Um, what did you say about Palmer? I said, we found Palmer hanging upside down by his heels in the barn. No, no, that's impossible, sir. I just chased him in here not a minute ago. What? I've been chasing Winthrop. Kiss me. Come inside. We'll have some chocolate and talk about a few things. Really, Katrina, I ran Palmer past this house. Oh, Ichabod. But if the squire found Palmer in your barn, and the first one was brown bones, then... Oh, no. Ichabod. Oh, well. All's well that ends well. <laughs> <laughs> 